blackface expert had a lot to say about me this week based on something I actually never said. So I just want to tell her, you swung and you missed. Please, girl, move on with your life. It's giving obsessed. And honestly, guys, the Jesus and Santa are white lady is not going to claw her way back to social relevance. And of course, that was our girl Tiffany Cross putting Megyn Kelly in her rightful place. So welcome back to My View, My Opinion, an opinion commentary podcast where I share with y'all some trending stories happening out there in the world or some trending conversation taking place out there in social media land. And I relate the out there to what's happening in here, meaning on the inside of me and you, because I always come from the perspective, y'all, of what can we learn from it? So when you leave today, yes, you will definitely have the information you came for, but you'll have the most important thing which is something you can take and use in your real everyday life that will make your life better. So guys, listen, you know, I've been following this story here on the channel regarding the firing of one of our beloved black journalists, Tiffany Cross. So I want to bring everyone up to uh, speed and, uh, you know, make sure we're all together and on the same page. And then I want to share with you the latest news. Okay. A lot of this we've already covered, uh, but I want to remind everyone that a lot of people aren't like me and you, <laughs> you know, they love Tiffany and they watch the cross connection, but they are not checking online every few minutes or every few days to see what's the latest, right? A lot of people didn't even know she had lawyered up until we brought that story. So even though a lot of things I'm going to be repeating just to bring everybody up to speed are things we already know. I want you just to allow me to do that so that we can all, like I said, be on the same page. Okay. So the first thing that happened was on Friday, Friday, November 4th, just four days, okay, before the U.S. midterm elections, Tiffany Cross and her staff, so don't forget y'all, it wasn't just Tiffany, and her staff were notified that Tiffany was being fired and her MSNBC show, The Cross Connection, was being canceled and pulled off the air effective immediately. So that you know, Saturday prior to that was her last show and theirs too. Okay. Now MSNBC re did release a statement saying that the show was canceled and that the network quote made a programming decision to cancel the show and that there was going to be a rotating, uh, you know, guest list of hosts guesting in that spot until the programming could be finalized. We also did hear that the staff members were told that, Hey, listen, you know, we're sorry about this right here, but Whoever's going to fill the time slot, we plan to bring you guys over to that show. OK, so we don't know. Are these people receiving checks? Uh, were they given some sort of severance uh, pay? Are they on you know, furlough? Like we really don't know what's going on with the staff per se. So a few days later, on November 7th, more than 40 black leaders sent a letter to MSNBC President Rashida Jones in protest of the cancellation of the cross connection with Tiffany Cross. And they demanded a meeting with her to, quote, discuss a path forward that is restorative to the reputation and dignity of Tiffany. Well, that letter was signed by civil rights groups, nonprofit organizations, right, y'all, including Melanie L. Campbell, who's the president and CEO of the National Coalition of Black Civic Participation. Derek Johnson, the president and CEO of NAACP, signed it. Alexis McGill Johnson, president of Planned Parenthood, signed that letter. Rashad Robinson, president of Color of Change. Also, we know uh, Roland Martin signed, um, Angela Rye and Jamel Hill, and again, a host of other people. Well, to our knowledge, and if it had happened, I think Roland would have told us all by now, but that meeting has not happened. But the network did release the following statement saying, quote, we wish, excuse me, we received a letter signed by several organizations. We are proud of our long history celebrating diversity on and off air at MSNBC and throughout the news group, close quote. Then they said, this is an ongoing effort and will continue to elevate diverse perspectives and voices during this election season and beyond, close quote. So, you know, they didn't address anything. And I think uh, a lot of you were like me. You watched Roland when he actually read verbatim what was actually in that letter that they all signed. And these people didn't address any of that stuff. They just kind of gave the blanket, you know, statement that you would give to anybody. Now, Tiffany did make a statement of her own. Remember, uh, I read that entire statement in full on the initial broadcast. OK, we then learned just a few days ago that Tiffany has hired Brian Friedman, who represented Gabrielle Union in her successful lawsuit against NBC when they let her go from America's Got Talent. Remember that whole debacle there? She alleged racism and, 
you know, all that stuff, all the back and forth that went on. But guess what, y'all? Brian Friedman also won big payouts for Chris Harrison in his dispute with ABC over his being, him being let go from The Bachelor. You guys remember all that stuff? And believe it or not, Brian Friedman is the same lawyer who represented Megyn Kelly in her dispute with NBC. You know, initially, I know the reports were that Brian uh, was this big time lawyer who who normally just represented black talent against these big networks. But we now see that that report is not was not 100 percent accurate. Now, she did hire Brian and he is now that we've learned communicating with the attorneys of NBC Universal, who, of course, own MSNBC. And they have said that Tiffany wants to know in writing uh, why she was fired. And as I reported on our last update, I'm glad that she did because, you know, a lot of times we just walk away without fighting, y'all. You know, we have to fight so much as black folks that sometimes we just say, you know what, whatever. I don't even want the headache. So I'm glad that she is demanding, you know, through this legal action that they put it in writing. Tell me why you fired me, which tells all of us that, you know, evidently they never gave her a reason. You know, maybe they just said, we're not going to renew your contract, but they didn't say why they weren't going to. Now, we all know that there are tons and tons of rumors that have been swirling out there since we all learned about this uh, a few Fridays ago about why Tiffany was fired. Okay, one of the biggest things out there is that allegedly she was fired for a comment that she made on Charlemagne the God's program on Comedy Central. If you never actually heard her say it, take a listen. Which state can the Democrats most afford to lose? One's got to let it go. Uh, Tiffany, what do you think? One's got to go. I say Florida lo- literally looks like the dick of the country, so let's get rid of Florida. Um- Allegedly, uh, what happened, you know, is that, you know, the ex got wind of that, even though it wasn't something she said on her show, and they were like, that's it, the last straw. Now, again, that's just a rumor. Now, what I want to share with y'all today is something that the New York Post is uh, is uh, uh, publishing. Now, I will tell y'all, like I said before, I've been vlogging now on the Internet since 2018. And two outlets that I have found, no matter what the story was, OK, and I mean, no matter what, these two outlets were always accurate. That's Variety and the New York Post. So I know people may have, you know, the Daily Mail, you know, we can't always, you know, although they may have some good people playing at different places. But I'm going to tell you something. Anytime I see something from the New York Post, I know that they, whoever their insiders are, are people who are truly, they're not plants, you know, people who just are planted by these networks to plant stories to the different media outlets to just kind of drive attention away from what they did that they had no business doing. Uh, So guys, I'm going to tell you something. When I read this story, I was like, okay. I may need to <laughs> take a beat and say, all right, Tiffany, <laughs> what, 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 what was really going on over there? But let me read it to you or read some things for, to you and then we'll talk about it. OK, so allegedly the New York Post spoke to many different insiders over uh, at MSNBC who were, quote, close to close quote the situation. And I'm going to read to you a list of things that these people said. OK, number one, they said here that Tiffany allegedly found out days before that Friday, November 4th, that she was being let go. That her agent, Henry, was negotiating her contract. And they assume, they don't know, but they assume that Henry told her they're not going to extend your two-year contract. Her contract, as most of you know, was set to expire December 31st of this year. So she really only had a matter of weeks left anyway. You know what I'm saying? Um, And they were trying to negotiate that two year renewal because her contract was for two years, her initial contract. So the reports out there that are saying now, let me be clear. Tiffany never said she found out on November the 4th. These are the reports from various outlets that told us, me and you, that she found out on, on the 4th. Now, we know that the 4th was probably the, quote, official day they told her um, and they didn't give her any wind prior that she was going to be let go. But allegedly from insiders, the agent was told and that they assume was relayed to her because the insider says here she made several frantic calls. Excuse me, guys. I got so much stuff here. Hold on. Pulled up. Let me just go over here. It says that allegedly when she was told by the agent that, hey, it's a no go here in in terms of renewal, Tiffany began frantically calling other journalists, media executives and social activists a week before she was fired in a bid to rally support 
uh, one of the insiders said. They said she made calls saying, quote, I'm going out in the blaze and I'm taking down the network and I'm going after Rashida. Now, I do want to say that the insider, even though that's a quote from the insider, the New York Post does make it uh, plain here that the insider did say they were paraphrasing what they heard Tiffany say. Okay, so she did not specifically use those words. That's just their paraphrase. But let me say this. That would explain the letter. You know, if it's true uh, that she knew a week prior and that she made calls to friends and journalists and media executives and social activists, that would explain why just a few days later there was this letter signed by 40 of the most prominent black leaders in entertainment and activism on her behalf. Do you guys agree with that or tell me what you think about that? Now, let me say this. Let me stop and say this, y'all. I'm about to read something that one of the insiders said. When I first saw this, because I used to work in HR a thousand, excuse me, 3000 years ago and shout out to all my HR folks that are listening. When I read this part, I said, now, wait a minute. If this is true, she deserved to be fired. Now, before I go any further, let me tell you all something about me. Those of you who are new listeners and your new subscribers, There are several things about me that you probably don't know. Number one, I don't believe in blaming men. You know, I do a lot of content for women. I love men. I'm not a man hater. I think the black man is the king of the world. And so I am not a get on the bandwagon and blame black men woman. And that ticks off a lot of women. And I've lost a lot of subscribers (laughs) over the years because, you know, folks want you to, you know, side with their misery. That's not me. Another thing about me that you may not know is this, although as a black person, I have to go through racism and deal with it and this and that and all, you know, all the crap that comes with just being black in this world. um, I also strive to live like this. It's not what's black or white, but what's right. Many, many, many years ago, something had happened to me with some white folks and I was just like, that's it. That's it. I don't try to walk in love. Lord, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm just going to have to just. You know, I just can't. And um, I was being tempted to really hate. And I mean, I'm talking about y'all know what I'm talking about. But I remember I was on my living room floor crying, just saying, I just can't do it because it was pretty bad what had happened. And I'm not going to say God spoke to me because I've never said it that way. Even when I was talking to a friend of mine who's an author and she was like, can I put this in my book? I said, sure, just don't put my name in it, but you could put it in there. But on the inside of me, this is what was very strong, a very strong feeling, because I kept saying to God, I don't want to see people. I want to see people the way you see them. And I kept talking about that scripture in Acts 26 from one blood. God made all nations of men. Now, I can't help what the white folks think. And I'm not trying to live my life caring about what the white folks think either. But you understand, you know, your own life, you have to live it a certain way. You and me. We have to stay on the side of right. And it is very hard. Now, that doesn't mean we don't handle business when, when, when it calls for it. What do I mean? Let me be clear so no one reads into my statements. Let me tell you something. If I am out somewhere in a business setting or at the Walmart or at the bank, et cetera, et cetera, and I am mistreated and I can definitely identify I was mistreated, mistreated because of the color of my skin, oh, I take care of it. I find out the person's name. I get their name. I find out who owns this business and I take care of it. I write my letter. I send my email. I make my phone call so that the next black person that rose up in here, you ain't going to do it to them. If you want to be a racist at home in your four walls, go for it. I can't stop you, nor do I care. But if you're on your job in a public place, you will treat me the right way. So even though, you know, we handle business and all of that, but you have to live your life in such a way that you stay on the side of right. If you want right on your side. OK, everything that God put into place uh, in this universe, all the natural laws, all the spiritual laws, all the moral laws will be on your side and mine, too, if we stay on the side of right. And sometimes we have to battle to stay on the side of right. That's just the way it is. So anyway, I was on the floor. <laughs> God, I can't I can't see him the way you see him. God, look at this. You know, I named off all this stuff, not just stuff that happened to me, stuff that happened to family members, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, we went, you know, just the whole thing. And I was saying, I want to I want to be like you. That's the way I want to live my life. I want to live a life pleasing to you. And this is what came to me quite strongly when it comes to me. It's not what's black or white. 
is what's right. And you know what? I immediately stopped crying and I was like, okay. So that's how I got to live my life. What's right? What's right? Not what's black, not what not what's white, but what's right. And so let me tell you something. When I saw what these people said, if it's true, if it's true, that's the big that's the big thing. If it's true what these insiders say here that I'm about to tell you, she deserved to be fired, y'all. And I can't say, I can't say, well, ah. Uh, You know, uh, because I love her and because I admire her as a black woman, because she's done so much. She's been one of the voices crying out in the wilderness for us. I can't get on the side of wrong because of that. Uh, If you did this stuff, girl, you deserve to be fired. Anybody would be fired behind this stuff. So let me tell you what they said. The insiders allegedly said that over the two years that Tiffany, this again came from the New York Post, over the two years that Tiffany was there at the network, They say here executives have met with Tiffany multiple times over the course of her two years, expressing to her certain things that she was saying on the show that they didn't like. Uh, It says the network standards team and Rashida Jones had sat down with Cross multiple times during her tenure, warning her to refrain from, quote, name calling, close quote, and use of, quote, vulgar, close quote, lewd language. The problem was never Cross's message, but her delivery, the source added. If that is true, that they met with her multiple times, way before this firing, and she didn't correct whatever it was they were asking her to do, asking her to do, they had every right to fire her. And y'all, let me tell you, I know a lot of you are going to unsubscribe. Oh, there's something else you need to know about me. I'm not on YouTube for numbers. If I was, I would have been gone a long time ago. I don't believe in withholding what I truly think to keep people or not saying things so folks can't go. That's just not how I'm going to rock and roll here. And if it comes to the point where I have to get off because there's no one that's listening, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a this is a hobby anyway. So I will tell y'all if that's true. She needed to be fired because here's the thing. We talked about this on the original broadcast. You know, when I got to the part where I was talking about what you and I can learn from it. And I was saying to y'all, as black folks, we need to work really, really hard. If we feel like we're not called to the traditional workplace, you know what I mean? And some people are called, y'all, to the traditional workplace. They are called and assigned to be at certain jobs. But if that's not the case and you feel that you want to do your own thing or you want to have your own business or be an entrepreneur, I, I think everyone should have a side hustle. That's just the way I think. Everyone should have multiple streams of income if they can. Now, it's not always possible, but in the situations in which it is, it needs to take place. We need to be very uh, purposeful in creating multiple streams of income. But let me just say this. When it's not our thing and we are an employee somewhere and the boss calls us in the office and says, okay, we're going to ask you to stop saying you fill in the blank. Okay, we keep doing it, which if this is true, that would have had to be the way it went down for them to say they met with her multiple times, which means they talked to her, said stop, whatever it was, she didn't. So they met with her again. So it's kind of like for me, not not exactly like it, but kind of like what went on with Wendy Williams. You know, uh, again, I say kind of like for all the folks who are going to start typing, this is not the same as Wendy. I said kind of. So let me explain. Remember um, when the whole thing went down with Wendy Williams, when Detmar Mercury, the production company, when they finally just pulled the plug on her show, you know, everyone was trying to blame a whole lot of people. They were blaming Kevin because of his cheating and his whatever, fill in the blank. Then they were blaming Detmar Mercury saying, okay, they should have been willing to, even the husband, when he talked to, um, oh my gosh, what's the dude y'all on YouTube? I like him. He's real funny. His real name is excuse me, choke, no joke. I was about to try to call his real name, but I couldn't remember. Um, y'all know that Kevin Hunter did an interview on choke, no jokes, um, YouTube channel. It's still on there. If you want to go look at it. And Kevin, Kevin was sitting there like a big baby, just blaming everybody. Oh, they should have worked with Wendy. They should have done this as if this wasn't a business. And this wasn't a contract. This is not a daycare for grownups. This is not a psychologist couch. These folks were in the business to make money. And as soon as she stopped being a money maker, 
any, like any business. Okay. See, we got to get real here, y'all and stop the foolishness. And when I say stop the foolishness, foolishness, I mean, stop the foolish type of thinking, expecting folks to do for us what they, what we, first of all, we know they ain't going to do because we are black out here. But secondly, uh, have they done it for anybody else? See, we got to be mature enough, emotionally mature enough to look around us and say, has this ever been done before? It hadn't. OK, so he was over there blaming Detmar Mercury. They should have done this. They should have done that. I got so sick of seeing so many people out there putting this on everybody. The fact that she lost her show. So I came on and I made a broadcast, you know, and I talked about whose fault is this really? And a part of what I mentioned on that broadcast y'all, was this. Have we forgotten all the times <laughs> over the years that they actually did work with Wendy? You see, Kevin's forgotten that. All those years going back to when she first fainted in 2017, they lied for her because they liked her and they wanted to continue their working relationship with her. And not to mention she was a big money maker too. I'm sure that was primary over liking her. So they would come out with all these statements on social media. Wendy is working on her health. They knew she was in substance abuse treatment. They knew it was substance abuse too, but they covered for her year after year after year after, until it came to 2022. And got, the guys, they couldn't cover for her anymore. And I said, okay, have people forgotten that? That this is a money-making machine. This is what this, this is business. It's not about your feelings and the fact that they worked with her and covered for her so many years that they did. We, I don't know of any other TV host, no matter what their race or nationality, who a network had done that for. If they have, we've never heard about it. Or maybe if you have, you can drop down in the comments and let us know. So it's kind of like that, you know, for me, when I read this part about Tiffany. If it's true that these people work with you and they try to give you chance after chance after chance, that's what I mean by it's kind of like Wendy. Detmar Mercury gave her chance after chance. And then it got to a point where they just said, that's it. That's it. You don't think it's real. You know, you don't think fat meat is greasy, as we say in the South. So that's OK. Bye. Because <laughs> it ain't yours anyway. You're an employee, you know. And so if it's true, guys, I don't know what y'all think about this, but if this is true, Tiffany needed to be fired. She just didn't get it for some reason, maybe because her program was so successful. She thought if it's true, I'm saying all this based on if it's true, what these folks said, if it's true, she obviously had a big head where she thought, oh yeah, they've called me in multiple times, but they ain't going to do nothing to me. They ain't going to do nothing to me. See, it would have had to be something like that because the normal person who understood First of all, I don't own this place. And so I got to come subject to whatever their rules are. Okay. Any normal person would have just said, okay, let's just say they called her in five times, y'all. Why would have, why did it need to take five times? Let's say they called her in three times. Why did it need to take three? Let's say they called her in twice. Why did it have to be more than once? Do y'all understand what I'm going? Not what's black or, or white, but what's right. The right thing to do is when we are an employee of, and listen, and I will tell you, I haven't always done this. I'm saying this from the lens of 2020 vision. You know how it is. When we're called in the office by the bosses of a place we don't own and they say, please stop filling the blank, stop coming to lunch, uh, coming from lunch late, whatever. And we just think we just going to keep with it. When we finally do get fired, we can't act like it was a surprise. That's what I'm going to next. If this is true, And Tiffany, you know, that statement she put on social media that I read in full on the initial broadcast, she shouldn't have even put that on there because she said in there that this was a surprise, that this was an abrupt. Well, it wouldn't have been really a surprise, nor would it have been abrupt if it's true that she had warnings all along the way that she needed to kind of rephrase some of the things that she was saying. Now, uh, we also know as black folks that We can, the only places that we can be unapologetically black is in our homes with our loved ones, our friends, and in the businesses we own. So I know I've seen a lot of uh, commenters, not here, but on social media saying, you know, you know, Tiffany was this and Tiffany was that. I I love that about Tiffany, that she really did. um, She she just was no whole bars. She said things on in in prime time that or on this major network that a lot of us had not heard that many people, you know, be willing to say because it takes cojones (laughs) to come in a room where you're a minority 
in numbers and say, this is what it is. This is what y'all are really about. This is what it's all about. Like when she said that when it came to Sage Steele and Van Jones, they were black journalists, but they weren't necessarily black voices. Uh, That was true. And that took a lot of cojones to say. I want to also reach all this. Another thing that the insiders allegedly told the New York Post was this. It was about money and spending. They allegedly claim that executives have talked to her for allegedly racking up as much as $100,000 in expenses for five-star hotels. They said, quote, she's staying at a hotel NBC's execs don't even stay at. Um, And they were talking, close quote, they were talking about allegedly her staying at the Four Seasons owned hotel in Los Angeles, where they charge more than $1,000 a night for just a basic room. The person went on to tell the New York Post, she mistook working in television news for being a celebrity. She was making north of $200,000, but she acted like she was making $5 million, close quote. Now, um, I also want to tell you all something else that was in the New York Post by way of an update. Um, remember, we read that statement from Tiffany in which she said that her show, The Cross Connection, garnered more than 4.6 million monthly viewers. Remember that? And that her show was the highest rated weekend show for MSNBC. Well, the New York Post pulled the numbers directly from Nielsen, the Nielsen ratings company. And this is what they are reporting. The cross connection never came close to that number, drawing between 704,000 and 465,000 viewers a week since June. So for the year, the cross show averaged 548,000 viewers. Last month, the show reeled in just 605,000 viewers on average, trailing CNN Newsroom with 696,000 viewers and Fox News' Kavoto Live, which tallied nearly 1.4 million viewers. Ratings also show that MSNBC Live with Alex Witt is the network's highest rated weekend show. And this is something else that um, the insider said, y'all. You've got to win the room to survive bad ratings. So that is what I wanted to uh, bring to everyone's attention. Um, For those of you, like I said, who haven't been keeping up with the the, uh, day-by-day things that have been reported by the New York Post. So what I want to now say as I um, wrap things up is I am still rooting for Tiffany. But, you know, what I hope doesn't wind up happening, and it wouldn't be the first time that this has happened, is that we all rally to someone's support only for us to then find out they have been doing stuff they really had no business doing that you can't even justify. You can't, or you shouldn't be, and not you, <laughs> not you. I'm talking about the proverbial you, uh, that a person can't even justify. So now, as far as the hotel stuff, my opinion of that is this. Let me tell y'all something. I read Tiffany's book, Say It Louder, and you know her book. And if you haven't read it, check in the uh, description box. I'll put the Amazon link there. Also, if you want to listen to it on Audible, I'll put the Audible free day, 30-day trial on there so you can listen to it for free. Um, but one of the things she talked about in that book is how when you are in television, you know, when you are traveling for business, they are paying for these things. Now, I don't know if they left it up to her to choose the hotel, you know, if she was booking her own travel and um, she paid for it and then she uh, requested being reimbursed. We don't know how that all works with NBC Universal. I know some of these media companies you pay and then you just turn in your receipts, right? <clears throat> but then some places you get a per dim for travel, you get a per dim for food, you get a per dim for transportation. It just works differently, I think, with most different um, organizations, these media outlets. So those of you who know the behind the scenes of that, please drop down in the comments and let us know if you know how it works at NBC Universal. That didn't really bother me because if they, you know, if it was up to her where she stayed, and she just turned in receipts, then, hey, she chose to stay there and whatever. They evidently paid it, right? They reimbursed her or they paid it, okay? Now, I want to say this, guys, as I was saying a moment ago, you know, we've been here before where, like I was saying, we rallied to someone's defense only to find out it wasn't quite all that we thought it was. And that person was very much aware that it wasn't everything we all thought it was. Um, I don't know if now that she has lawyered up, if Tiffany, if if whatever really went on here, if we're ever really going to know y'all, because it really may be a situation kind of like with um, Monique, what happened with Monique and Netflix or Gabrielle Union and ABC, you know, or whatever, whoever owns that America's Got Talent, 
where, you know, it's kind of, I don't think they're under a gag order, but it's kind of like the details are sealed and they're not allowed to talk about it. So it really may wind up that we may just be left with a bunch of um, our own assumptions as to why she was really let go. We know, uh, those of us in the black community know for sure, <laughs> it was because she was unapologetically black. So that definitely, if not was the main thing and the only thing, you know, that had something to do with it. Um, and they didn't like that. But we may not ever really know the finer details. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? And we also understand that a lot of these companies, um, you could be doing things that were never problematic. Like, for instance, this whole spending money at the hotel kind of thing. That was probably never problematic. But when these companies get ready to get rid of you or me, Everything that wasn't problematic that they never said nothing to you about before all of a sudden become problematic and they start, quote unquote, building a case against you. So it could have been a situation like that as well. So, guys, that's all I have for today. Listen, wherever Tiffany goes, I heard Joy Reid say this and I am totally in agreement. Wherever she goes, whatever she does, we're going to support her because she is our sister and she has been. And has done a fabulous job of being a voice crying out in the wilderness. Um, Tiffany Cross to me is one of the most important black voices in media because she will not compromise and she will not water down her message. And guys, we just can't say that for everybody else. Is it scary for these people? Yes. Is it even dangerous? Yes. That's why they need our support, you know, more than ever. But we also have to remember that we have to stay on the side of right. And, you know, we don't have to talk about it all publicly, but if somebody was doing something that maybe they shouldn't have been, you know, doing, then, you know, to the side privately, somebody needs to pull their coattail and say, hey, you know, you know, whatever. But that, that's kind of my thoughts on these, these things reported on by the New York Post, the latest information. Now, I will be bringing you guys as soon as we find out what happened with this lawsuit or if she changes attorneys or whatever happens. So just keep it locked here, okay? Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, guys, if you enjoy hanging out with me. Don't forget to comment, to rate, and to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And listen, if you're really feeling inspired, you're welcome to donate via the Cash App link that is in the description box, y'all. Let's just see how this all goes. Thanks for joining me for another episode. This is my view, my opinion. Bye, y'all.